Hi everybody, Juan Ninja Casey here, and today is the video you guys have asked for for months. Which video is that? How to do blushing anime characters on your anime glass paintings. Through trial and error, I've discovered a method that works really well, and I'm going to share it with you using the character with the hardest name to pronounce from My Hero Academia, Uchanaka. Papa. Mama say mama sa mama kusa, but you just took a uchanana. Uraraka, hit the intro. Okay, we're gonna start off with printing out the blushing uraraka put the glass over it that we're gonna use. This is a five by seven glass I'm using. So I print out the photo to the size. And I always start with the outline as you should. Now, when you're doing things like this where you're gonna use gradients, you don't always start with the outline. There's some instances where you start with the actual transparent color or the gradient first, but that depends on where the gradient on or the transparency is on the graphic, of course. Like when I did the Dabby and Hawks glass painting where I started with the flame first, then I went in with the dark lines and then the colors. Now for full transparency, after the lines are done, there is a cleanup segment where the lines are cleaned up. Don't let anybody tell you that their lines are perfect the first time, it is not. So after I do the lines, I actually have to go back in with an X-Acto blade and the Sharpie to clean it up. The next step is I realign the copy with the glass again, just to make sure that I get the lines correct that are on the blush, because those lines are gonna be incorporated with the blush because they're part of the picture. And then I remove it and then get back into the coloring process. And with the coloring process, I always start with the darks. The thing is, for some reason, I don't know if you can notice it on this video, but this brown that I'm using is very gel-like. It's kind of like breaking up, breaking apart and coming out in clumps. Even though I'm using it through the pin nib squeeze bottle, it's coming out in clumps, so I actually had to reapply it. And it was very gel-like, so it was very transparent. So I had to reapply it a few times, let it dry all the way. That's why you see the color changes a little bit. Let it dry all, all the way, reapply it. And as you can see here, I'm doing the cleanup because again, when it comes out in clumps like that, you know, the lines are not very straight. And you'll always find yourself doing cleanups for on straight lines and that's why you know that's the secret to my success <laughs> but I don't always show you guys that on the video for effect so when you're doing glass art and your lines are not straight don't get frustrated that's how it's supposed to be just going with an exacto blade into more paint and take care of it and move on there's so many misconceptions about glass art that makes it look easy and then when a lot of people try it and it doesn't you know, seem to be as easy as it looks in the video, they get very frustrated and then they give up. Don't give up. It's, it's actually a very hard thing to master. I did five tries and you really don't wanna see how those tries looked before I actually posted a video of my first glass art. It, you know, <laughs> it's not really something that a lot of people know, but they think that they should be good at it right out the gate, and that's not true. I mean, it looks like you should be. It just looks like basically you're filling in paint in lines, and how hard can that be, right? But they never tell you about all the other things that come with it, like cleaning up the lines, choosing the right marker for the outline, choosing the right paint combination for the colors, choosing the right paint and marker combination so the paint doesn't break down the outlines, but I digress. So let's get back to painting Uraraka's blushing face. The thing is, when you are painting the blushing face, you have to use the paint as a mask. So right here you see she has her hand 
on her face. So you paint everything but the area that doesn't have the blush over with the color that it's supposed to be painted in. So if I didn't paint her hand, then the blush would get on her hand. You basically paint everything that doesn't have the blush on it. This way, when you start with the airbrush, it doesn't go everywhere, just the place it's supposed to be. Up to this point, you've been using the Oral Base Sharpie and acrylic paint. So now, let me introduce you to the material that you'll be using from this point on to get the desired effect of the blushing anime character. This is red acrylic leather paint from Angelus Direct. Now, I chose this because these are the paints that most sneaker customizers use for customizing their sneakers, but the particles on this paint are also a little bit thicker and um, they're a little bit stronger when it adheres to glass. So I use this instead of regular acrylic paints. I will also leave a link in the description below as to where to get it. Now the next thing you'll need is an airbrush. This is the piece de resistance when it comes to making your anime glass paints blush. The airbrush has this trigger that you push down for air then pull back to release the paint and the air pushes the paint out. Now the air doesn't just come from nowhere. <laughs> With the airbrush, you also need a compressor, which attaches to the airbrush to provide it with air. You mix the paint in the cup on the airbrush. The closer you are to the art, the thinner the lines. The more you pull back, the wider the lines get. The Angelus paint has a great consistency. So although it's more liquid than gel, acrylic paints is also more opaque. So it bonds to the glass better when broken down into fine particles through the airbrush. That's why it's better for blushes than regular acrylic paints. Why is that important? Well, it's because once you start painting over the blush, the Angelus paint will stay put rather than run or break down. Now, one more thing you will need is either a heat gun, like the one I have here, or a hair dryer set on high. This is to dry the paint from the airbrush right away so it doesn't run or clump. This is important because it's glass and glass is non-porous, which means there's nothing for the paint to initially cling to. So the dryer dries it right away so it doesn't go anywhere. So you carefully apply the blush with the airbrush while also holding the dryer on the painting, drying it at the same time. Next step is to use the same flesh colored paint you use for the hands or the skin the spray over the blush. Be sure to remember to hold the dryer or the heat gun towards the painting, drying the paint as soon as it goes down. This way, again, it doesn't run or blotch up. After letting that dry for about a half an hour, apply the rest of the skin tone over the painting by way of dabbing, not strokes, dabbing. It's very important that you handle this painting delicately because if you scratch the blush area by mistake before it fully dries, it will leave a hole or a scratch mark and ruin the effect. When you're finished, flip it over to behold your masterpiece. Thank you everyone for watching this tutorial. I hope it was very helpful and you learned a lot from it. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. This is Draw Ninja Casey saying I'll see you next time.